Okay, we'll open it up for questions from Max Muncy. Dave Vasse. Max, how important was it to win last night and give uh, Julio and Kershaw this opportunity in the next two games? Uh, it was huge. You know, um, there's just uh, any game you can win is obviously big. You know, we uh, uh, try to go out there and play as hard as we can. And now we have two really good pitchers out there that uh, set us set us up in pretty good position to uh, finish this thing out. But um, you know, we can't think ahead. We got to think about right now and today. We're focused on today. Are you a little surprised by the way the Rays are coming right at you, and they seem to be trying to come on the inside part of the plate on you this series? No, uh, you know that's 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 who they are. They they pitch to their strengths, and that's what their strengths are. They're not going to change who they are for anybody, and uh, that's why they've been so successful, and uh, that's why their pitching staff is as good as they are. They they don't try to manipulate what they do based on other people. They they pitch their strengths, and that's what they do. Thank you. John Shea. Go ahead, John. John, you're on mute. Bob Nightingale, take it off mute. Hey, Max. Uh, we all see what Mookie Betts is doing on the field throughout the season. Max? Sorry, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to repeat that. Yeah. Uh, Max, we'll know what Mookie Betts is doing on the field throughout the season, postseason, but what has he meant to you guys inside that clubhouse going back to spring training when he had, uh, when you guys had the team meeting and he spoke out? Yeah, you know, it's been huge. He's uh, he's been a leader for us. He, he, like you mentioned in spring training, he came right in and challenged us before he even knew any of us. And that just speaks to the kind of player he is, kind of leader he is. And, uh, you know, he's made every single one of us better. He's made all of our work ethics better. And, uh, uh, you know, on top of that, he's just been really exciting to have around. Is there anything that surprised you about his personality that you didn't know before, as now that you know him as a teammate? Um, no, I mean, everything I'd ever heard about him was how hard of a worker he was and how he doesn't let any type of success change who he is. And, uh, you know, that's 100 percent true. He, he he's in there working as hard, if not harder than anybody, uh, despite all the success that he's had. And. Uh, you know, he wants everyone to be as good as he is, and he, he pushes everyone to be that good. Thanks, Max. John Shea, go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that, Max. Um, uh, Max, when, when you when you look back at your journey from getting released by the A's and now doing, you know, big things in the World Series, what, what do you see when you look when you look back? I mean, how did you do this? Uh, a lot of hard work. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of training my mind. Uh, you know, that's one of the things I talk about the most is just the mental adversity I had to overcome. Uh, not just what happened on the field, just things that happen off the field. With you know, you you, you come home from the stadium and you're not happy. You're, uh, you know, you're dealing with a lot of stuff. It's uh, it, it makes it really difficult. So just trying to overcome all that stuff is something that I'm I'm most proud of. And uh, just re regaining the little kid in me. Uh, you know, going out there and regardless of what happens, just enjoying my time and. Uh, just being thankful that I get to go out there and play baseball every single day. Was there ever a motivation to prove the A's wrong? I oh, mean, I think there's always 
a motivation like that um, yeah. for anybody. You know, you, if you're ever released from a team or traded from a team or anything like that, there's always some type of motivation. Jorge Castillo. Hey Max, what's the uh, what's the clubhouse vibe like right now? Uh, same as it's always been. You know, it's relaxed. Guys are in there. Uh, you know, just having fun, joking around with each other. I think. Uh, I think actually at this moment they have the UFC fights on, so they're all pretty pretty locked in on that. Um, uh, you know, when it comes down time to do business, we're going to focus on what we have to do, and uh, we're going to focus on tonight. Is there a sense in there that hey, we're two wins away from from doing what we set out to do back in way back in February? Um, you know, maybe a little bit, but for, like I said, for the most part, guys are focused on tonight. We're focused on the starting pitcher tonight, focused on the raise and, uh, uh, we're focused on whatever we have to do to try and find a way to, uh, get a win tonight. Just lastly for me, uh, what do you think of the four man outfield the Rays have done a few times and, and did you adjust your approach at all when you see it? No, if you adjust your approach, that's giving them the win. Uh, you just got to keep your same approach and, um, you know, you got to keep, keep your same. So you can't try to change anything based on what they're doing. It's, uh, uh, that's what they want you to do. Thank you. Mark, Mark Wicker. Hi, Max. When you look at, if you were to uh, try to tutor a young hitter about pitch recognition, uh, what sort of exercises or drills or just mental approach would you suggest to, to a young hitter in that situation to be as discerning as you've been on balls and strikes over the past few years? Uh, I think the biggest thing would be stick to your approach. Um, you know, you're, you're looking for a certain pitch. If they don't throw that pitch, you know, that's, you don't want to swing at it. And, uh, uh, that's probably the biggest thing I would, I would uh, emphasize is just, you know, be, be strict on your approach and, uh, uh, you know, be disciplined on it and don't, don't let what they're doing get you out of that. Were you always this good in terms of recognizing it, recognizing it early? And, you know, if, it, if a hitter is having trouble doing that, what types of things would you suggest? Uh, I mean, it's something that I've always had. Uh, uh, people ask me about it all the time. I don't, you know, I don't do any drills. I don't do any of that type of stuff. It's just something that I've had. And, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I would just say you got to stick to your approach. Um, you know, everyone goes through a slump. Everyone uh, everyone has, has bad times. And it's, uh, uh, you know, through that, you have to make sure you're still doing the same stuff that you did when you were successful. Um, just because you're going bad doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you're doing things wrong. It's just the way the game is sometimes. Jeff Wilson. Hey, Max, uh, you've been here about three weeks, about, what, 20 minutes from, from where you grew up. I wonder if, if how, what that's been like for you, that you, you, you haven't been able to leave the bubble and go, I don't know, to your favorite restaurant or see your parents or go run home and pick up a pair of shoes that you want, anything like that? It's been extremely difficult. You know, you're, you're so close, yet you're so far away. Uh, you know, this is this has been home for me for the last, uh, you know, 19, 20 years almost. Um, you know, this is it's home to me and my wife. It's a, uh, uh, it's where we have our house and, you know, not being able to go see that, see our friends, see our family, uh, not even allowed to have our pets. It's, uh, you know, it's just been extremely difficult. It's, um, but, uh, you know, we're really close to the end and, uh, hopefully it's something that's going to all be worth it. Do you have, do you have something you're going to do? First thing you're going to do when you are able to, to go out and go home? I just go home. Just go home and enjoy. Uh, well, first thing we're going to do is go pick up our pets. Uh, you know, those, those, are, those are our kids, our family. We're going to pick them up and we're going to go home and we're just going to enjoy being home. Okay. Thanks, Max. Jack Harris. Max, how often does the coaching staff talk about controlling, uh, controlling the strike zone? And what are the things that they actually do to get that message across? Uh, I, you know, I don't know that they necessarily talk about controlling the strike zone. They just talk about uh, being disciplined in your approach and being disciplined in our team plan. Um, you know, we, we might be looking for a certain pitch. We might be looking for a, a certain side of the plate, uh, or maybe it's up or down. And uh, just, you know, not chasing anything that's not in those zones. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that we try to emphasize. JP? Hey, Max. I, I know coming off of injuries, it's um, an easy trap to fall into for a lot of hitters to develop any bad habits. I'm just thinking specifically about you getting hit on the hand back in July. Um, how long did it take you to, A, feel physically 
where you wanted to and, and then B, eradicate any bad habits that might have come from that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I might still be dealing with some of that. Uh, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest thing for me on that was mentally, um, you know, between last year breaking my wrist and then this year breaking, uh, you know, a finger, uh, anything that was coming towards the end of half of the plate, I was kind of freezing on, I was kind of jumping out of the way. So, uh, to me, I was mentally, and I'm still kind of that, that way a little bit, you know, um, I used to do a lot of damage on inner half pitches and I don't necessarily know that I've done that much this year. I fouled a lot of them off. And I think a lot of that, um, isn't necessarily a bad habit with a swing. It's just mentally not being ready to attack because, you know, in the back, back of your mind, it's still, uh, you know, here's what happened last year. Here's what happened this year. It's, it's, it's difficult to get over that sometimes. Do you think that's why it was important for you to continue just seeing pitches, even when, you know, physically it would have been easy for you to go on IL just to be more comfortable with that inside pitch? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you have to eventually get over it. And uh, yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. You have to uh, go out there and you got to keep, you know, keep performing the best of your ability and you got to keep doing what you can. Okay, we'll take a few more. Alana? Alana Rizzo? Max, human tendency is to look forward, to look ahead. How are you guys able to not do that and legitimately just focus on the task at hand? I think it just speaks to everyone we have in our clubhouse, you know, starting from the top all the way to the bottom, you know, with the staff and the players and uh, even the training staff and the, the strength staff, it's all focused on what we have to do for today, uh, for right now, for this moment. Uh, you know, we're, it, it, there's no, there's no, Hey, we need to get you ready for tomorrow. Get you ready for the next day. After it's, we got to be, make sure you're ready for today. Uh, we, here's our plan for today. Here's the pitchers that are throwing today that we need to hit. Uh, you know, here's the batters that are, uh, playing today that we need to get out. It's kind of just, uh, you know, I think it's everyone involved and that just speaks to, uh, you know, everyone that we have in that clubhouse. How have you seen Julio progress as a pitcher? It, it's been pretty incredible. Uh, you know, from my first time seeing him when I came over here, the Dodgers being, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the young guy that's, uh, uh, was always on the pitch count to now being the guy who's they, they want out there in a big situation because that's who he is. It's, uh, you know, it's been pretty incredible for me to watch. And, uh, you know, just with the type of guy that Julio is, it's, um, you know, it's really, it's really, really fun to see and really good to see because he's such a good guy. And, uh, you know, his stuff is really, really good. And the way he's able to control it, move in and out, move up and down, uh, you know, keep people off balance. They're never, they're never able to sit on one pitch. It looks like, uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's just, it's pretty incredible to see. Thank you. And last one, Rumblum. Max, do you view home runs as particularly important to the success of the Dodger offense, or is it just a sign of the times where pretty much for all teams, it's now significant? Uh, you know, I think it's just the result of us having good at bats. Uh, you know, we're not out there trying to hit a home run. It's not, uh, it's not what we're talking about in our game plan. Um, you know, we're just trying to stay disciplined to our approach and, uh, you know, that those, those are a result of us doing good things. You know, it's not us just swinging for the fence every single time up with the plate. It's, uh, you know, it's guys putting together good at bats, seeing good pitches and, uh, you know, hitting a mistake that the pitcher makes. Thank you. Thank you, Max.